Yeah, I can't even talk. That the Python two three thing becomes irrelevant in a modern language, and by modern language, I mean modern languages are now compiled. LLVM has totally changed the game. Interpreted languages are dead. Except for Bash and little stuff you're going to do here and there. It's kind of fun to watch the pendulum swing back. I, I love watching it. So, the you know, when it used to be all about the C, right? And then it web the web was invented and nobody could nobody wanted to code back-end CGI web code in C. So what do we do? And then we started writing shell code and everybody got hacked because shell is really horrible for that. In fact, uh, the example in um, the Linux command line is in shell. It's a CGI script. And then Python came on this scene like, oh God, thank you. And the whole world went ballistic for Python and PHP. And so we put that everywhere. And all of a sudden, interpreter languages were king. Uh, JavaScript was being used all over the place. Uh, it was interpreted, interpreted, interpreted. That was when all the extra shells came out. Z shell, TC shell, fish, everything. It's all about interpreted. Uh, it was all about interpreted, interpreted, interpreted. And, and then what? And then so and then Ruby came out and we had Ruby was pretty much the climax of the interpreted insanity. And I loved it. I was there with them. I was writing I wrote the I and I library for, for Ruby. I was right there along with them. I'm not saying that I wasn't a part of it. It's yeah, it's kinda like the centralization versus decentralization. And then all of a sudden what? And then and all of a sudden and and then it got really nuts. So Node came out, right? Ryan Dahl kind of grabbed Node with as much thought as Notch made Minecraft. <laughs> And he threw it out there, and now the whole world's using Node, which he doesn't use anymore, by the way. He just released Dino. And I did. It was a long time ago. And so then he, 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 um, so yeah, he, he stumbled on, and what, what if we put V8, you know, in college, you know, he's experimenting. And so, and then, so, so no, but it wasn't even Node. It wasn't even Node that was the, that was the climax of the interpreter insanity. It was CoffeeScript. CoffeeScript. Which you can almost track. I, I kid you not. If you look, if you look at the wave, all right. If you look at the wave, CoffeeScript was when good people started making blog posts that said, you know, I appreciate the developers are doing this and everything, and in their snowflake kind of snowflake kind of way, they said, but you know, I just think we should use JavaScript right there. I think we're kind of pushing the boundaries of having an interpreter for an interpreter for an interpreter. I mean, I kid you not. That's what it was. An interpreter for an interpreter for an interpreter. I mean, the interpreter insanity kind of culminated in CoffeeScript. And, and then what happened? So why do, so why do, you, why do you do this outside of my, of my working hours? Why, why do I do this? Oh. <laughs> uh, I maintain a legacy copy. <laughs> I didn't know that, but I'm sure you did. I did not know that. I wasn't at, this is not a personal attack. So, so, so you know what I'm saying? And then what? Then Go comes along and I want to, I don't know this for sure. Go was the first, somebody said, okay, it's time for strict typing again. We need strict typing. We, this interpreter insanity has gone crazy. We're not going to call it that, but we're going to move on. Let's just interpret it. It won't die. That's true too. Uh, and so we need some strict typing. And even I posted in my, I posted it in my thing. Guido van Rosen said, I have learned through sad experience, this is exact quote, I have learned through sad experience that for larger projects, strict typing is a requirement. This is exact words. I have the quote in my Discord. You can go look at it. Um, and, and he's actually showing how they're bringing TypeScript um, into Python because the untyped languages are the worst. And, and so, you know, but you got to understand, we had Java. That's what pushed us into the interpreted insanity. Java was so overly strictly typed and so monstrously bad and so draconianly class-based blueprints and so anti-object-oriented programming and it confused the fuck out of everybody. And then what? So everybody's like, oh, please, just give me an interpreter language. Any interpreter language, I don't care. And then we went crazy with the interpreter languages and now we're coming back. Now we're coming back. So the whole world is like, <laughs> we're like, okay, it's time for me to think about my types and, and you know there's another couple disasters unity for example what happened to unity script did you guys see that one that was fun unity script lived for maybe what three months <laughs> you know what i mean oh another one so go to uh, godot go dot or godot depends on how you say it right they had sort of a unit they had 
Unity scripts, you don't even know it existed. Unity script was JavaScript for Unity, but it was so bad and there were so many errors made with it that everybody like overwhelmingly, it, there's still documentation in it, uh, used the C sharp stuff, the mono stuff, right? And so they stuck with that. And so basically everyone was getting burned because of loosely typed languages and like, oh shit, what have we done to ourselves? I mean, CoffeeScript was one where they went, no man, no, just no, no, this is, no, this is like the worst of Python plus the worst of JavaScript <laughs> and a brand new syntax that I have to learn that I don't even know. It's like, and so, and we totally lost our, lost our focus because of Java. I think I, I'm going to blame Java and C++ for pushing us into that because that was the only alternative. Like, hell no, I don't want, I don't want strict inheritance. Oh my God, no. And so we're like, I want a loosey goosey language where I can actually program object oriented programming, writing, Python, writing Perl code that had to run on 52,000 machines uh, that had to be encapsulated to run on everything. I thank God there was a thing called Perl.exe, which uh, basically took the Perl interpreter uh, bundled it together with the Perl code and unpacked the interpreter and ran it as, as a single operation. If you can think about how wasteful that was, but it was the only way for us to distribute our code in a way that was portable, period. Uh, and you see this kind of shit with, you know, Perl virtual environments and stuff like that. Problem is, is you can't bundle that Perl virtual environment and send it along with, Perl, I'm sorry, Python. Uh, and so that's essentially what you get with LLVM. That is exactly what LLVM is. It, the only The only downside of LLVM is that the code has to be compiled. That's it. And people want to do that anyway. Perl is still very much a thing. Yep. Perl is still a thing, but not for big applications for what it was intended. And I'm going to actually do a video on that. Uh, Perl regular expressions are the industry standard. There's no debating that. There's overwhelming evidence of that. And uh, the PCI, libpcre is included in every other language uh, pretty much. So that's what Perl is an awk replacement. Awk and said replacement. The end. It was never meant to be more. And you can go watch stupid. You can go to RWX. Uh, you can go to RWX.gg uh, slash uh, stupid or slash don't. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, slash Perl. And I'll give you a big long uh, article about why Perl uh, saying Perl is dead or is a read only language is stupid because it just means you don't know what Perl. The ability for Perl to even fill in the gap between C and shell as a backend language for web development is proof and testament to its amazingness. Was it meant to be a systems language that had thousands of lines of like enterprise code like Python is being used for today? Hell no, it was never meant to do that. It, it's a testament to its amazingness that it was ever even to fill that gap. And so when people, uh, uh, yeah, I really don't assume. people people who slam Perl, they just they don't know it. So just don't slam it until you know what it is. And what Perl's primary purpose, Larry Wall's purpose was when he made Perl, was to replace said and awk and tr and cut and all of these things that are like all different. They have different kinds of regular expressions all over the place. His goal in writing Perl was to write a command line tool that would replace those things and, and synchronize them. And to this day, it still dominates at that thing. People who use awk and said and don't know about Perl, I feel sorry for them because they just don't know better and they do it. Perl is on every system that's been built in the last 25 years and it's right there for you to use from the command line. Do you need to write a full script on it? Hell no. Are you a pen tester and you break into a system and you want a powerful thing over there without having to ship over a payload? It's there. You be, wouldn't be writing your stuff in there. It's got a full HTTP library. In it. Actually, it doesn't. You got to get that from CPAN, I think, which is good. The only downside is, is it's a little bit slower to boot because it's a little bit bigger than awk. That's it. And that's not an issue today. So, so yeah, and, but, you know, who doesn't want to learn the industry standard regular expressions? Most people don't think they have any relevance today, but they do. That's an, another rant. I'm, maybe I'll cut this thing up and make it into multiple videos. I need to get ready. I have to teach at five, but... Um, but I do want to say uh, about the VI thing and the BSD thing, uh, nasal demons uh, and fear is a minus, is a minus. Oh, I don't know about those, Pro, but PHP, I can do it too. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't believe anybody would ever compare PHP to Perl. PHP is a template language gone horribly bad. <laughs> PHP is a demented, monstrous, unmanaged Frankenstein's monster of a mustache library. That's what PHP is. That's exactly how it came to be, by the way. Absolutely no direction. 
Oh yeah, PHP. I learned it too. I I I could a lot of things in PHP. Perl and PHP are almost similar in the sense that they both understand regex. <laughs> that's probably, that's pretty fair to say. That's pretty fair to say. Yeah. Uh, writing a closure in Java. Oh, writing closure. See, I I think. I think I could get into closure actually. I probably could. I never done it. I, I, people hate the parentheses, but I think I could get into it. That would be well. The P, the fact that PHP, Perl, and Python stayed together that was good because everybody could still write LAMP stack applications. You guys remember that? There's still colleges teaching LAMP stack. Yep. What is it? LAMP stack. I impressed myself that I learned coding after PHP was my first impression. But you know what? It's like, it's whatever brings you to it, you know? And you learn the next thing and go from there. I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, as a Lisper, I really dislike Clojure. Why oh, sell it with Java? <laughs> because there's a JVM on their enterprise environment and they want to get it. What's your opinion on Scheme? Um, Scheme is, according to Forbes magazine, uh, Scheme was one of the two highest paid languages you've never heard of in 2015. Uh, the other one? Anybody want to guess? Go. Uh, everybody knows Go now. It's like it's not not a secret anymore. So, um, Scheme and Closure uh, and the JVM languages, I think they're I think they have the their biggest relevance is in enterprise environments that have already invested a lot of money in Java virtual machines. So they've already invested in the Java ecosystem. So those kind of things. This is why you see Jython too, right? We saw a lot of Jython at IBM because because people have already invested in some sort of JVM environment and they just want to put it on top of everything else um or did i get that wrong am i mixing up closure with scheme i am i am scheme closure is scheme on java that's right i mixed them up sorry you're talking about scheme is schemes the one that's like lisp right what am i done teaching today um my sessions end at nine um, and then after that, I, uh, 